Hey you guys, so yes, I'm wearing a face mask. I'm in a shared area of my building and we still have pretty strict mask rules even if you are vaccinated with COVID. But today I'm excited because we are going on our first family car camping trip with myself, my partner, and my dog. So normally when we go camp, we meet my partner's parents and uh, they have a big kind of RV situation, so we kind of get to glamp a little bit. I usually sleep outside. Uh, I, I usually set up a hammock and then sleep out in nature versus in the RV. This is our first time taking to camping just in our own little vehicle. So behind me here, we have a Honda HRV, uh, but I'm also excited because we're going to be trying something new. So here it is, we have a Luno mattress. We did not get this for free or anything like that. Uh, my partner first saw an Instagram ad for it and insisted that we needed it for car camping. So we're gonna give it a, a go. We have set it up. We did the um, primary setup where you're supposed to blow it up and then let it sit for two days in that state before we repackaged it up. But we're going to give this a try tonight. And in our car right now, it's just kind of fully loaded, but you can drop the seats all the way down in the HRV so this just kind of fills in and converts this into a bed. Uh, we usually just like for reference that's kind of like our camp kitchen slash um, general kind of gear box. This is also new for us so we have a Yakima the Rocket Box Pro 11 I want to say and then we also got this Rhino Rack rooftop rack as well. In the back seat here, we have my pack. Uh, that's a Gregory bag that I've used for many, many years for traveling. That's for my dog Stevie. Blankets for also Stevie. If you have a miniature pincher or a small dog that likes to blanket nest, you have to have a lot of blanket blankets. This is all my partner stuff here in this North Face duffel that we've had for a long time. A meadow mat from, I think it's a light designs, which I don't think they exist anymore, which is really sad. We really like their meadow mats. We have a couple of those. Up here, it is just full on chaos. Um, I did have it organized and then we kind of got down to the wire and I actually have to go finish our grocery shopping for the trip. We're going to be camping for two nights. So we have another, another small meadow mat over here, tripod. We have our camp stove in here. We've got my puffy. I brought a hammock, a uh, yoga mat for stretching slash kind of leaving at the end of the car. So we have something to kind of put our shoes on before we get in for the night for bed. And then we also brought a two person tent as well, just for like storage and then like a pop-up thing. Yeah, it's a lot, it's extra, <laughs> but we're so used to glamping when we meet Carrie's uh, parents out that um, we wanted to make it really comfortable for the dog. She's very high anxiety, so we figure if we make it as kind of bougie and comfortable for her as possible, that means we'll actually be able to stay the full two nights and enjoy ourselves. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of finish up um, putting some stuff in the car, and then I'm gonna head out and get the rest of our groceries. We also have a big honkin' cooler, and then I have like a, one of those like three gallon water things for like sports drink at a sporting event. Uh, I have one of those, actually I actually have a few of those from doing different cycling events. And we'll put some water in that and we'll head on to Lake Kaganza. going to set up the Luno mattress which is our first time doing an overnight with it so here's how you set it up first you have to scoot both of the seat the front seats all the way up so I'm gonna go do that then 
then if your seats fold down all the way, which they have to in order to use this, put both of your seats all the way flat. We put our dog in baby jail because she has never been camping without an RV. All right, so this is the mattress. And these are the first pieces that you inflate. So these are the head pieces that go behind the front seat of the car. And that's just so it fills in that negative space between the back of the seat and the mattress, but then also allows the mattress to go in far enough so you can actually like lay on it like a full adult size mattress. So the bed all comes packaged in this nice sort of bed roll here. I um, am terrible at repacking, so I did not fit this pillow in here, but if I actually had tried, I would have been able to. And there is a little repair kit right here as well for the mattress in case it gets a hole. So here is the other kind of pillowy thing and it comes with this little 12 volt air pump. Um, honestly, this would be the thing I think I would say, maybe give us a nicer one for as much as we spend on these mattresses. Um, but it does have a little on off switch and this goes into the inflate hole there's an inflate and deflate on each of these so there's inflate and adjust and then deflate so there's kind of two valves here and i'm gonna use my handy dandy <laughs> jumper cable slash power slash usb charger thingy that I've, we've had for years thanks to you my partner's dad but hey if there's anyone out there that wants to gift us someone a nicer solar panel unit we would take it all right open this up my partner's taking the dog for a walk because she doesn't like the sound of this thing which is it's kind of loud uh the other improvement i would say that luno could make is using kind of a twist lock system. So with this, you just have to like hold the pump on. Which isn't terrible and it works quickly, but I kind of wish it had like the twist lock pump, like something like a stand up paddle board or like an inflatable kayak or something had. I realize those are much higher like pressurized items, but um, I still kind of wish it had something, you know, that was a little bit more substantial. <laughs> up until it's full and you can see it says Luna here it'll say um, bottom so this would be like the bottom portion of it sitting downwards and this would be up top so I'm gonna put one of these behind one of the front seats you may have to deflate it a little bit to put it in there. Um, they want you to keep the valves up so then once you get your mattress in you can adjust how firm or how tall it raises the back of the mattress up where your head is. I'm just gonna inflate this little guy and the inflate hole. Sure, there's 10,000 other YouTube videos on how to do this. <laughs> Doing mine slightly less full so I can shove it back there again gonna say bottom on the bottom and you want these to be at the top these pieces so you can adjust them 
um, when you lay your head down. And you know, before I finish the big mattress, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a little something special. I'm dedicating this step two to the YouTube channel Camping with Steve. <laughs> I started watching his channel a couple of years ago, I think, and he's up to like 500,000 subscribers or something crazy. Just some chill dude in Canada who just likes to go camping and stealth camp. And yeah, if you don't follow Camping with Steve, most likely you do if you're watching this, but if you don't, I'm going to link his, his channel um, probably down in the description. If I can put it, I'll put it on the screen somewhere here. Uh, he also has a website where you can donate to provide him with step twos. So this one's for Steve in Canada. Delicious. This is from Untitled Art here in Madison. Well, they have a tasting room in Madison. Uh, I think this is actually brewed elsewhere. This isn't actually a beer. Oh, Wanakee. Wanakee, Wisconsin, which is just north of Madison. This isn't actually a beer. It's a seltzer that tastes like grape pixie stick. So, all right, back to it. Another pro tip to Luna would be to put a handle on the back so you can pull this out a little easier. Okay. And there's even these handy little <laughs> your head goes. Little outline. The left and right are on separate air chambers, which is nice because if you want a little bit softer or a little bit firmer side, you can kind of adjust that. Uh, for reference, I'm, whoa, <laughs> I, I can't sit down because I drank part of a step two. Um, for size reference or length reference, I am five foot five with shoes on, so five four, five four three quarters. Uh, normally without and I kind of just fit in the HRV and with a little bit of room to spare so you could probably be a little bit taller maybe 5'7 or 5'8 and still be fairly comfortable but I do not see this being an option for someone who's maybe taller than that unless I don't know you keep the back open with like a mesh or like tent situation uh, which we don't have one of those yet. Um, we're just gonna try doing this. And then we have some mesh uh, screens that we bought online for each of the windows and actually one that goes over top of the moon slash sunroof. So we can crack the windows and luckily with the uh, skybox on top, we can open that up and not uh, worry so much about rain if it does start to rain. Um, and then we also, could crack one of the rear windows. We don't have the kind of drip covers yet on the sides. Uh, I'm not sure how to install those if we also have a roof rack that has like the clip-on rails. Um, so I don't know. I'll look into it. That's something we're slowly buying all this stuff as we kind of find we need it for camping. But a lot of this stuff we already had. Luckily, it's just we haven't had time to come out and do this. So Thankfully, with 
Um, me changing jobs and having some time off, we're able to come out and enjoy one of our fantastic state parks. All right, now I'm gonna get back to it. All right, you guys, you can come on inside with me. Take your shoes off at the door, of course, because it's very muddy, but we can crawl inside. Oh, <laughs> oh, can you tell I'm from Wisconsin? Oh, all right, so here we are. Shut the doors. Got these mesh screen thingies. You've probably seen a lot of other YouTubers who do car camping and um, car living with these. Oh, it's so nice and dark. In here, we just have the back open, but our back is also tinted. That situation, uh, we'll get that fixed too, so it's dark in here. And then I also have, coming from e-trailer along with my hitch that's probably not going to show up until June, <laughs> uh, a one of the window covers that actually goes on the outside of your windshield for winter, which if you're from the Midwest or uh, Canada or anywhere, that gets snow, the east coast, whatever, like heavy snow, you know that those things are really nice. So basically what they do is they cover your windshield completely uh, and they sit on the outside and attach around your side view mirrors. And then when it snows a bunch, instead of having to scrape your window and like shove all the snow off, you literally just take the loops off of each side and then lift it off and like just lift the snow right off of your windshield, which is amazing. So, but the purpose of that is it's more full coverage, so we could put that on as well as keep another one on the inside or like do a little hangy sheet situation and still, uh, you know, have some privacy. And then we have the little window that I'm gonna, here, I'll show you real quick. So our moon slash sunroof with the skybox, but you can see there's mesh at the top here too. With It's a magnetic mesh cover, so it goes over top. Um, this one fits our car great. Um, I think there's different sizes. I, I hate to support Amazon, but sometimes those are the only places I can find stuff like this. Same with these mesh window covers, the front and backs. So the front ones aren't as, yeah, these kind of suck. They don't cover the entire window. So we're gonna probably look into a different option and figure something out. But the back ones work nicely. These ones, so I had to buy two sets of these because I lost the other, the it, this one's mate. And these seem to come down a little bit farther and I thought I was buying from the same company. In fact, on my Amazon account, it showed that this came from the same company, but this one's a tiny bit on the short side. It doesn't come down quite as far as the other one. And the mesh doesn't look quite the same. It's a little bit different, but you know, that's okay. Now we have a spare because we I bought a second set of these. So this is camp. Right now there are very few bugs, mosquitoes, etc. So we can kind of get away with this. But come summer, we definitely wouldn't uh, probably leave this open. dogs. We were both kind of craving stadium food <laughs> and hot dogs is up there. So we bought some high high quality meat hot dogs from the grocery store. And we love to do fried onions. So all we had was a red onion. I didn't want to have to buy another one, but we made it work. And we are cooking I am cooking on the gas one kind of single burner stove. It does two kinds of fuel. 
it does isobutane or propane. It has an adapter, it does both, so it's awesome. Only the most nutritious. <laughs> Pixie stick seltzer <laughs> hot dogs with homemade cornichon pickled onion relish and Doritos. And a campfire with a tent and a dog in the back. That's camping. All right, so the temperature dropped by a lot. It actually got really cold out, so I'm layering up, put the beanie on. And also, I'm getting the fire going more so, so we can stay a little bit more warm. My lips look purple. I wonder if my drink is tinted purple. Possibly. <laughs> my tall step two. Uh, anyway, we finished up dinner. <clears throat> I need to finish packing up and cleaning up. Oh, another pro tip. Tongs are an amazing fire tool. You can pick up your logs and rotate them. So if they're just burnt on like that one side and you want more flames um, versus just kind of like slow burning, you can just flip your, take your tongs, and flip your pieces of wood over and then it gets the blaze going and makes the fire a little bit hotter again for you. So that's a little pro tip from someone who's been camping since she was a, a wee, wee tiny, oh my gosh. <laughs> so this is our little stove. I actually did it's a video on it just by itself showing how it works, but it's just a little single stove. I don't, I mean, up to this point, I usually don't make more than like a one pot meal if I'm camping. So usually this is fine or I'll like do this and just cook on the campfire if I have one. Um, so I haven't needed a double burner. So this is perfect. And as you can see, we've got the propane hooked up to it right now, but it does take the little isobutane cans that you can find for super cheap at restaurant supply stores. But yeah, this is the, I think it's like the GP 3400 or something like that. I don't know. Check the link wherever I put it for the review video, but it's an excellent, inexpensive, dual fuel stove. And I like that I can bring both po propane or use isobutane and that just makes it easier to find fuel for it when we're out places. So, and then I have my handy dandy trusty Lodge cast iron. Just picked this up. <laughs> these two things up today at the grocery store because I realized I didn't have, I didn't grab those to bring. And then this is just a chef's knife from home. And then chopsticks I actually bring because I like, that's how I like making my eggs, um, scrambled eggs with chopsticks instead of a, like a whisk. I just um, usually whisk them up and then put them in the pan and then use chopsticks. That's another little chef secret. I'm not a chef, but I've seen lots of chefs do that. So yeah, this is our little setup. It's a little messy. We're going to put all this away. And then here are our little lights and the car, the dogs in there, the fire. And we're all happy to, as Camping with Steve says, hunker down for the evening. There's a big straight line. Stevie, did you sleep well? <laughs> I think she's the only one that probably slept well to last night. It was very cold. Yeah. Anyway, it wasn't the Luna's fault. Um, there was a few different things. It was very, very cold. And the campsite that we had, unfortunately, it's really, really muddy and still wet, which I had mentioned earlier. But, um, yeah, all my socks uh, got soaked through. And um, I tried to sleep with... 
two humans and a dog um probably would work in here it just um so right here i kind of wish i had like another pillow because there is kind of like this gap and it's like you want to use this space to have as much as you can um on each side of the doors but <laughs> because there's nothing soft here it doesn't feel very good to lean up against it so i know that next time I would definitely bring some sort of like an additional pillow or blanket situation to also add some insulation um as well from the outside and then I this is my pillow from last night I forgot to bring a pillow so I just threw some clothes luckily Carrie brought an extra pillowcase so I threw clothes in here I've done that a thousand times hammock camping hammock camping and stuff so that wasn't that big of a deal. Um, kind of used to that. But then also to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, in order for the car alarm to not go off, you have to lock the door from the inside. You can't just use the key fob, so you have to crawl over up to the front of the car and lock it. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else. We just kept... There wasn't too much condensation. We just rolled down one of the windows. The only other little bit was there was some condensation on the back window. We have it open now though. Uh, let's get a little bit warmer in here. Also, it lets Stevie sit out at her lookout. Um, she hasn't really wanted to chill outside at all. She really likes sitting inside. She's spoiled like that. She, um, I think. <clears throat> As a puppy, she didn't really go outside that much, except to go to the bathroom. Um, when we got her, she's I think 11 now, but when we got her, we had to teach her how to walk, to go on walks. She didn't really know how to do that, and she was already like f five years old. So yeah, she's kind of special. but. All right, I'm gonna get dressed and we're gonna go hike and cook some food and move on with our day. All right, I finally got up and changed. Well, you can't really tell because I wore this bed, but whatever. My coffee that I brought. Um, pro tip for anyone who wants to come and stay at Lake Ganza State Park. Uh, I would avoid the campsites in the lower numbers on the even sides because they're all in these sort of like mud, muddy patches, muddy grassy patches, and the gravel doesn't go back very far. So the entire campground in the spring is just going to be mush, or if it rains, it's going to be mush and it's just going to make a mess and get everywhere. Our car, the tent, everything our, our our cooler is just covered in mud and is dirty and i had spent so much time cleaning the car before making this trip and we have some other camping excursions coming up so i'm gonna have to do it all over again probably hopefully not to the extent that i had to last time it's mostly just the spots that we we don't have like a little packable uh, folding stool yet to get in into the skybox so we'll buy one of those but yeah pro tip if you want to actually not have just dirt everywhere don't stay in like number 10 or 12 or 16 or whatever avoid those I'm starting to feel like my videos are just gonna be preachy but this is not what you do you don't leave your campsite with your fire still going I don't think I think this guy was here last night pretty late and then he left but like I don't know if he came back and then restarted his fire but I may um bring some water over and try to extinguish this or something there are some very strange noises going on in the background here so we are just kind of cleaning up camp kitchen area. We made some breakfast this morning and I think we're gonna go for a hike. Um, I think we're just gonna go home tonight. We were going to stay two days, but with uh, 
Stevie literally just wanting to sit in the car the entire time. It hasn't been the most fun for her. So we'll take her for a little walk, a little hike. Uh, we'll, we're gonna start packing up kind of all the easy stuff that we can pack up at the moment. Really, we have to do the bedding first. Otherwise we can't really fit anything else uh, in the car. So um, do some dishes for camp kitchen. We use one of these things and just fill it with water and we have fresh water and like cold unfortunately dish uh, water but we don't want to waste the time and energy of boiling when we're just going to take all this stuff home and put it in the dishwasher anyway so we just do kind of a quick clean and then we'll take um, I'll kind of get everything organized on the table here um, synced up for packing and then throw out the garbages and then um, also we have to we have a ton of food in the cooler because we thought we were going to stay the two days so we had full meals planned for for the two days um, but that's okay we'll uh, we tried to eat as much as we possibly could and then we're going to dump off the excess water that way the cooler is not so heavy and then we'll just go home and put it all in the fridge so that's where we're at at the moment and just like that, we're all packed up and we tried to leave the campsite better than what we found it. Uh, I think we pretty much got all the garbage people had left behind, threw it out. Um, we had some spare firewood that we gave to our neighbors. This is a really beautiful place. It's just all this is super muddy because it just the sun doesn't come through to dry it out enough. At least it's not it's not warm enough yet. It's been a cold couple of days, but a lot of thick tree cover, and then there's the site across from us, and the little road. Yeah, the one thing I would say is if you want a little bit more privacy, you're probably going to, going to want, um, if you're car camping or tent camping, going to want to bring some extra tarps or a pop-up shelter type thing with some privacy walls we had hung that little tarp between these trees just to give us a little more sense of privacy so yeah. all right so we didn't really shoot an end of the vlog type portion of the video so I'm going to do that now uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about my sort of first impressions of the Luno. So again, this is a product that my partner actually bought, paid full price. It's not like we were asked to make a video or anything about this, although Luno. Um, <laughs> we would be happy to create some content for you or give some feedback um, if, if you'd like. Um, so the things that I like, I'll kind of go over the things that I like about it. Uh, the setup is really simple and really easy. Uh, I like that they thought about the sort of top square pillow portion, so it fills in that sort of gap um, between the mattress and the front of the seats. Uh, I also like that the material seems very durable and easy to wash. I wasn't concerned about my dog walking around on the mattress and puncturing it or anything. Uh, it's relatively small for what it is as far as like packing it up. Um, Obviously, any type of mattress that's going to be that large and, and fit in the back of a, a vehicle is not going to be the most compact thing in the world. Uh, it would be interesting to see them working with maybe some other materials to make some more like ultralight versions of the mattresses and kind of approaching it kind of like similar to what um, Thermarest and um, some other companies do as far as using kind of lighter weight stronger materials I realize that would probably increase the price quite a bit of the manufacturing of the product but if it maybe was a little bit more of a compact um, version of it because the materials could sort of fold up a little bit smaller and weren't as thick um, but were still lightweight and durable you know maybe they could release a kind of even more premium line um, a few things I didn't like about it is it takes a little bit to adjust the comfort level of uh, kind of how you want to be positioned on the mattress. So 
I mean, I like that. That I guess that's also a tick in the, the positive direction, I guess, is um, that you do get that flexibility of having that release valve so you can remove some of the air. Um, so usually what we kind of did was we started <laughs> my dogs walking around and exploring. I just want to make sure she's not going too far. Hey, Stevie. Stevie, you have to stay over here. Um, so one of the other benefits that I liked about it is that you do have the ability to adjust the air pressure. So our approach that has worked pretty well is kind of over inflating it or not over inflating, but putting it so it's pretty stiff to begin with and then being able to use that deflate valve to remove a little bit of uh, excess air so you can adjust like the square pillow cube type things. You can uh, deflate those a little bit if you don't want your head up or to be like sitting super upright. For me, I'm usually a side slash stomach sleeper. I don't know that I would be able to stomach sleep on that mattress. Um, I didn't try it. I mostly laid on my back and my sides and that was fine. Um, my hips were a little bit sore, um, but that might just mean me needing to dial in the, the pressure. So that's the other, it's kind of a, a bonus. <laughs> it's a plus and a minus is that um, it takes a little bit of dialing in um, the pressure of the mattress to kind of figure out what it is that you like. Another kind of bonus is that you get to have independent inflation of each side. So if you're sleeping with a partner in there or a friend or a family member or a dog um, <laughs> or whatever, um, you do have the ability to customize the level of pressure in each of the side of the bed chamber. So then if you're like me, where you might want it a little more firm um, versus a little more soft, you have that flexibility. So that's really nice. All right, interrupted, of course. Someone insisted on sitting on my lap while trying to do this wrap up. Uh, the other thing that was somewhat annoying is that we, in order to close the hatch of our car, the mattress was like a tad on the long side. So we kept having to kind of lift it up in order to close um, the end of the car. I mean, we pushed our seats all the way forward, but maybe we needed to also tilt our seats a little bit more forward as well, but then you kind of lose space for storage in the front seat. So that's kind of not the greatest, but we'll experiment with that as well. Um, but that was another kind of annoying thing is like, if we wanted to crawl out of the rear hatch um, after opening it up and then come back in, you had to like lift up the mattress. And then we are, the, so the HRV, oh, Honda, I hope you freaking change this. You cannot close the rear hatch and I guess I never even thought about this when we were car shopping. You can't close the rear hatch from the inside of the car. So we may try to make a mod to be able to do that. So then when we're both inside of the car with the dog or whatever, we can pull something and actually close it shut. Otherwise, one of us has to get out of the car. One of us has to lift up the mattress and then close the hatch. So that was kind of annoying. Um, but overall, I mean, we had pretty good sleep. Um, the other thing that we kind of noticed is that in the door wells, um, on both the driver and the passenger side, um, there's a little bit of a gap. So where you kind of like roll off to the side of the mattress, kind of close to where the car door is. Um, I would probably recommend bringing an addi additional pillow or something so you could have more insulation or like have that to kind of prop yourself up against the door because um, there is a bit of a hollow there. Um, so that's the only other thing too that was mildly annoying. It wasn't a deal breaker. Like if you forgot to bring a pillow to put there, it's not like you wouldn't get a great night's sleep or anything. Um, and then again, just depending on the vehicle that you're using it in. I, um, like I said, I'm five, five, four and three quarters, five, five. Um, I did find that I was kind of wishing that I had a little bit more leg length, but that has more to do with the car versus the actual mattress itself. The mattress was fine. Um, I want to try sleeping on it by myself and see if that makes a big difference or not. Um, and I may try to do like a thing where I sleep with the mattress fully inflated on both sides and sleep that way and then try another night where I just um, air up one side of the mattress and fold the other half under itself. I would like that because for solo travel, it gives you a lot more um, space on the inside of the car for storage and like changing your clothes and 
accessing your things instead of having to crawl up to the skybox all the time and get everything out. It's it's not the perfect solution, especially if you want to like boondock or something, but it's it's a nice option for car camping and um, we're going to be, I'm going to be doing a gravel race um, in about a month up north in Wisconsin and we're going to probably just sleep in the car for that. So uh, yeah, so we're going to give it another try in about a month at my at my bike race and then we're going to stay up north for a long weekend at a KOA campground so we're gonna give it a try and we have a few more trips that we want to do to try things out and kind of dial in our car camping situation because usually like I said we'd be meeting my partner's parents um, up north staying in their RV with them or uh, in their campsite um, with their RV but because of COVID restrictions which may get lifted we don't know um, their campground that they stay at, they no longer stay at a state park up, up north, they stay at a private campground where they can store their unit for a much longer period of time because in Wisconsin, you can only stay in a, a one like state park campsite for up to 14 days. They can actually park their unit for like months on end at this place. So it's a better bang for their buck and um, it allows them to kind of come and go from their, their home home up north. So, um, and they can kind of travel around um, upper Wisconsin and the UP and places like that a little bit easier because their unit is already up north so they can just drive their car and do day trips and, and whatnot. So anyway, um, I would say I would give like my initial review would be, oh, it's tough. Like I would definitely buy the Luno, like if I, um, we're weighing the options or not just because it's so fast and easy to set up um, but I wish there were a few little tweaks um, oh also I wish I had the bag with me but um, rolling like pulling the bed out of the bag I wish they had a handle at the back of the bag um, the end of the bag so it makes it easier to pull everything out uh, we were able to to fit it in its bag with the um, com little compressor and everything when we put the little cubes um, deflated in on top of the actual mattress when we rolled it up and put it in the bag so that um, it's not impossible to fit back into its packaging which is nice because I've had some <laughs> some products where it's like once you take it out of that bag it's never going back in there so uh, anyway we had a really good time and the Luno was enjoyable I don't really have like a rating for it yet I guess I would give it maybe like a 4.2 out of 5 stars um, I see some room for improvements uh, that they could make or even some additional options that they could offer. But I think for a seemingly new product, it, I've only really come across them on Instagram. I don't really know much about the company, but for a seemingly new product um, from, I'm guessing maybe a new company, I think they have a really strong start um, as far as the product and and how it's it's, Comf it's pretty comfortable to sleep on um, it's very easy to use but they could definitely do some updates that would make it a little bit better so that is all for the vlog today and uh we'll try I'll try to kind of <laughs> I don't know I'm new to vlogging so I don't know if any of this is interesting or if it's just boring or what but we're gonna keep trying to improve them and make them better so all right thanks guys please like subscribe share you can find me at at Spokehaven on Instagram and TikTok and then Spokehaven.com is the website. See below for um, some more information about the Luno, where you can find it, and then also some of our camping gear that we used um, in the video as well as where to find us on social media and online and ways that you can support us. So there are some uh, affiliate uh, associations I have now and um, we have a little Stripe donation set up on thespokehaven.com in order for us to be able to um, continue to create content, buy gear, do reviews, and kind of provide helpful information. I've had a few people reach out and they've, you know, sent uh, emails of appreciation or even questions about some of the items. Um, if you've learned something from us, please consider sending a, a donation our way to support the efforts but uh all right stevie says goodbye thank you for watching and we will see you